Hello and welcome back. This is an overview of the Megawang 2000 Turbo Edition SDK version 1.0.0.7. This video will demonstrate what you should expect to see when you run the example SDK files so you know that everything is working correctly. So you can build this hardware yourself from home using mostly through hole and larger surface mount parts, it's not a problem. Or you can send the Gerber files or the schematic files and build the Gerbers yourself using the Proteus design suite and then send those Gerbers to your preferred PCB supplier. I use PCBWay for nearly all of my builds and they have always returned to me a fully working board. If the board doesn't work then it's something that I've done wrong rather than them. They produce very neat work. I'll be including a link to the GitHub repository and also the itch.io project page so you can see all of this documentation yourself. This is the directory view that you would normally see when you download the SDK. What we want to do first of all is that we want to convert all of the assets. So the SDK includes art and audio conversion tools which will convert various different image formats into a format that can be used within the code. It handles things like bit plane conversion and palette conversion in a way which can be described relatively easily but with a powerful command line syntax and it produces repeatable results. Or, if you want, you can of course use your own tools for generating binary assets. But I wanted to include something which was more tailored towards the hardware. Using the emulation framework is relatively simple. Because the hardware is modular and can be configured and plugged in in different ways and connected in different ways, I use this descriptive syntax for describing how the hardware is configured. And also here I can add some syntax which describes what binary files to load at what addresses. I don't have to use the syntax for loading binary files into certain addresses. I can write code to do that. It's just quicker and easier to prototype using the syntax, using the behavioral syntax. The behavioral syntax because it runs part of a test case, it can also validate those screenshots that we saw there. So when the emulation is running, we can validate the screenshots with what we expect to see in the game or the demo when it's running. So now everything has been converted. We can use the batch files to assemble the 6502 code and then run the emulator with the relevant tag in this case is at demo1 which corresponds to the demo1 scenario. This demo is a, a little RPG demo which was using some of the first graphics files that I used to test the, the hardware. So we can see here that there are several layers. There's a sprites layer, characters layer, background tiles layer, and also the foreground clouds, which were part of the Mode 7 layer, which, if you know Mode 7 from the Super Nintendo days, it's a scaling and rotating graphical layer. This demo uses these original graphics files, and the image conversion tool just takes sections of these files and then stores them as converted binary data which can then be used in the demo code. For example, it imports these sprite frames and also these characters. The next demo is an Arkanoid demo, so again it, it imported some Arkanoid graphics from uh, the arcade game. Uh, there were some sprite sheets available that I found on the internet. and the image conversion tools allows me to import these graphics and then just write some code to 
handle the animation ball bouncing and, and removing the blocks. So this is another demonstration of the graphics hardware. This demo 3 also has an animation component, so all of the animation frames for the big floating blue spaceship that you can see there has, has a few animation frames and these were included with the example code as well. There is also an example of using the APU, the advanced processing unit, to multiplex sprites. So instead of just 24 sprites, there are 48 sprites there. And then this is using the timer. So using the Commodore 64's timer to time the sprite updates allows us to also do this kind of demo where the 6502 processor can update many more sprites than what was available on the stock Commodore 64. You'll notice here that Demo 3, the definition for Demo 3, has definitions for how fast the clock speed is, but importantly, it's got to randomly initialize all memory using seed 4321. What this does is that it initializes all of the memory randomly in all of the uh, expansion audio and video hardware. This allows us to see whether or not the code clears memory state to avoid unwanted uh, rendering glitches or, or audio glitches. Demo 4, which is build 4.bat, imports Turrican Amiga graphics and lets me run around a level. Again, the clouds that you can see in the foreground are actually on the Mode 7 layer. The Mode 7 layer is one of the layers that I have not built yet. It's probably going to be the next layer that I build. And then this would complete all of the layers that are in the bomb jack schematic. I already have the sprites and the scale sprites and the two, well, the characters and the tile screen layer and also the vectors layer and the com combination layer as well. So if, if we move to the left, you can see that this cloud will get larger. And actually, there's actually a slight little bit of skew or rotation in the cloud as well as it's moving around. Demo 5 is just a quick demonstration, very short self-contained demonstration of using the APU to precisely time scroll updates for the tile screen. Now, Demo 6 actually comes in two parts and runs on the Commodore 64. Now the Commodore 64 loading screen then goes into the Shadow of the Beast title screen. This uses the characters layer, the tiles layer, the normal sprites, the scale sprites, and also the APU and the audio board, all in combination to replicate the Amiga's Shadow of the Beast title screen, but actually add on extra things like the scale sprites that you could see there. The Commodore 64 then uses the cartridge to load a lot of data rather quickly and decompress it to the expansion hardware, and then goes into what looks like the start of the first level of Shadow of the Beast. So this again uses the sprites, scale sprites, characters, files layer, and also the APU for the brass bars in the background, but also the horizontal scrolling positions for all of the parallax effect that you can see here as well. The music that you can hear being played is from the Amiga Shadow of the Beast game. It's um, the mod file which I found somewhere on the internet and I just use the conversion tools to convert this into a format which can be played by the audio hardware. The Commodore 64 sends all of the note information and it also decompresses the sample information to the audio hardware. So the Commodore 64 via its 6502 and through the user port is running all of this. Of course this is an emulation, but the actual real Commodore 64 also does this. This demonstration, which is Demo 7, shows uh, multiple character layers with independent palettes, a parallax scroll effect, and also it uses the APU to multiplex the normal sprites so that we can have the boss character on the bottom and also some of the enemies up at the top. 
there's more than 24 sprites being used here because most of these sprites are 2x2 two two sprites, so 32x32 32 32 pixels in size. Demo 9 is the Mega Lion Turbo Edition, Turbo Edition 2000 demonstration. Mega Lion 2000 Turbo Edition, rather. And this demonstration shows scaling sprites moving around in a kind of pseudo 3D world with some assets that were from Space Harrier. Some of them were from Star Fox. Some of the uh, character sets and things like that were from various Amiga demos. The music file is also a mod file from the Amiga days. All of this runs quite happily on the Commodore 64 when plugged into the video and audio hardware. The green and red floor, if you like, that you can see here is actually updated by the APU. This demonstration, Demo 7, uses an extra sprites layer, so runs two sprites boards with a character screen and tile screen for a, I think it's Street Fighter demonstration, kind of that. So this demonstration, Demo 11, actually runs the expansion hardware display that you can see here on the left, which has got the purple background. But then on the right hand side, you can see that there's actually a real Commodore 64 screen. So this is basically showing that the emulator runs basically the, the full 6502 processor with basic and kernel ROMs if you want to. I'm going to type it while I'm typing in this basic program here just to demonstrate that. This is too simple. I'm going to add some extra stuff. So let's add some extra variables and things like that. Here we go, blah, blah, blah. Print A, and, and then I'm gonna increment A. There we go. And if I uh, uh, list that, then you can see, and then if I run it, the purpose of this demo is that it shows having an interrupt which updates the Commodore 64 screen display to the video hardware, so it kind of like mirrors the display. So in this demo, when it runs on a real Commodore 64, I can have the TV and, and an LCD display running side by side, and then basically it's a Commodore 64 running two physical displays at the same time. Of course, because it's Commodore 64, it can also send graphics data over the usable. So this last demo, demo 12, shows like an initial boot up screen, it shows raster bars in the background run using the APU and also then it goes and demonstrates the vectors layer which shows 3D rotating graphics. So these are all of the demonstrations that or demonstration projects that you would find in the video hardware SDK. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day wherever you are.